a target and you say, oh, it's to the left, move the target to the left. No, <laughs> you have to move yourself. Okay? So sometimes we're focusing on the, the action and not on everything that happened before, especially within ourselves. Um, and so that's why we have to change or adjust our mind. That's why, as we know, the famous verse that, it's re that uh, is related to the transfiguration and the transformation, let us be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And this is the true transfiguration of the soul. Uh, as St. Paul says, to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. He says this in Ephesians. Um, and repentance is very, it's a mental act, but it's the mind being guided by the spirit. <coughs> Um, if it's just a physical thing, because you know the matanias that we do in the church, bowing down and getting up, it's a physical act. Um, but if and if, if we just keep doing this like we do on Good Friday 400 times, and there's no mental act, and there's no prayer to it, it's not repentance. It's matanya, but it's not repentance. <laughs> okay? Um, <clears throat> and all of us need to repent because all of us sin. As St. Paul says, all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, for example, oops, you have this spot, oh, it just got transformed. <laughs> you have this spot, you know, you can't really see it like it. It's a white t-shirt, and there's one, there's one uh, ink spot or coffee stain on it. Like, you, you can't just say, I'm clean, right? Even if you have one sin, you can't say that it's, you're clean. Um, so, if you go and jump in the mud and the shirt is all dirty, you might be more aware of uh, the fact that you're dirty. But actually, I think the person who has a cleaner shirt is more um, sensitive to the dirt, right? Um, so what I'm trying to say is, sometimes the closer we get to God, or the higher we get in the, in the spiritual life, the spiritual ladder, the more sensitive we are to sin, and the deeper we repent. Like, that's why when I read about the stories of the monks in the desert who, you know, picked up a cucumber from the ground and wept over it for, for years, <laughs> like, we laugh at these stories because, you know, we've done much, much, much worse, <laughs> right? This is because he was very sensitive and he saw, you know, one little speck on his white shirt and, and wanted to go to God to cleanse him of this. Uh, and that's just the, the concept of what true repentance is. The, the last thing that we say in repentance is it's true change. It's a real change. Um, and it's not just, it shouldn't, this talk shouldn't just be uh, for information, but uh, God, I feel God is calling myself and all of us during this time to offer to God a true change uh, in our life. <clears throat> our, our real preaching should be out of a real change. Uh, and people will know that we're Christians, not just by our love, but also by our repentance. If we have the right faith, if we have the right church, if we, then we will have the right repentance as well, and vice versa. Um, <coughs> the other aspect is that the real true repentance that has the change, it's a constant change. It's a continual uh, change, not just a moment in our life. Um, like we could say, repentance might be the U-turn if we're driving on a road and then we find out we're going the wrong way and we make a U-turn, okay, that's good. But let's say we start veering off course, <laughs> we have to adjust. Um, so uh, this is, and let's say we're going straight, we have to make sure that we stay straight. Uh, so repentance is for everyone. As St. Paul says, not, I don't count myself to have attained the goal yet. I haven't already apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forward to those things are ahead, I press toward the goal. Uh, and this is the, the repentant person's always adapting themselves. Even if you're going straight, okay, maybe I want to go faster. <laughs> or maybe I want to make sure that I stay on course. And, and the road is straight because it's we're the Orthodox faith and we have the straight path. Uh, and, and sometimes there's obstacles in our way that, that uh, kind of direct us off but we have to be diligent to return back to the proper, the, the proper direction. Okay. Even sometimes I feel that um, we as parents, you know, we tell our kids to confess, or we might not be confessing. We tell them to apologize to one another, and we neglect to apologize to 
uh, our spouse or to apologize to even our children or co-workers or relatives or whoever it is. Um, so we have to remember that we are the best models. Um, one, one speaker said, you know, parenting is a modeling job um, because we have to imitate the Lord and they, whatever we do, whether we imitate properly or not, they end up imitating us. Uh, so if we are truly changing and repenting, then our, our children will follow uh, likewise. Okay. Um, that's the second part. Uh, okay. So the last part, we ask, okay, how can we repent effectively? Any ideas? There's a lot of points. So I'm, I'm not going to belabor it. I'm going to try to be brief. But what do you think is a key factor? Of repenting? Mm -hmm. Being self-aware? Yes, very good. That's the, actually one of the first points. What else? Any ideas? Self-awareness? Okay, we'll start with that. And maybe if you have others, we'll, we'll go on. So um, actually, uh, in the book of Acts, it, it gives us a good framework. Um, St. Paul, after his uh, speaking to King Agrippa about his uh, transformation, he says, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but <clears throat> um, declared, and talking about his service after the Lord uh, entrusted him with the, the mission work, he said that they should repent, turn to God, and do works befitting of repentance. So I took this as a threefold aspect of repentance. The first thing is repent, <laughs> which is, uh, I consider it to be the internal act, okay? The second thing, to turn to God, which is, uh, again, the, the spiritual life and the, and, and, the, and the prayer. And the last thing, to do works befitting of repentance. So um, it, it deals with our relations with others and, and find also uh, with the priest and, and the sacrament of confession. So we'll briefly talk about these, the, the repenting in the self towards God and then towards others and, and the, the priest. So as we take the example of the prodigal son, he came to himself. And as St. Paul says, let a man examine himself. And this handout is kind of uh, a guide to help us examine ourselves. Sometimes when, when people come or or repent, uh, I can only tell by basically, you know, the confession. But the confession is a good uh, way of measuring, oftentimes, the repentance. Because some people might just list their sins, but they might not have honestly or deeply repented. And other people who deeply repent, it's manifest in, in the confession. Um, <clears throat> if... if someone doesn't sit them with themselves before confessing them, they might not have repented. Um, and the more we give opportunity for this, uh, and the more in-depth we, we go. Um, so like one good way is taking the Ten Commandments, and here's just some questions based on each. Sometimes we over, oh, I haven't, I haven't killed anyone, so that's okay. You know, I haven't committed adultery. That's, but there's a lot of things related to that. And uh, His Holiness Pope Shenouda, in, in his book on the commandments, he's written books on each of the commandments, or uh, chapters at least on each of them. And there's tons of things to make us more aware of how we are breaking most of the Ten uh, Commandments to a lesser degree, maybe, than what we, than the literal. Okay. Um, so this is probably one of the hardest parts because. Uh, we, the internal act will usually lead to everything else. Um, and if we don't do it properly, then everything else might just be outward and, and not necessarily sincere. Uh, and how to get yourself in this mood, it takes planning, it takes um, time, and it takes an effort. Um, so, um, the father of confession can help if the person is far, but here's just some uh, fruits of, of this type of repentance and like we said the godly sorrow in 2nd Corinthians chapter 7 St. Paul was uh, rebuking one of 
the people in the Corinthian church who sinned. And the person repented and he was sad. He was like, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> St. Paul said, I'm happy that he's sad. Why? Because this is godly sorrow. He said, godly sorrow produces repentance to salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces. He's talking about depression here. The sorrow of the world produces that. Um, St. Augustine, one of the greatest books that revealed to us the heart of the, con the true repentant is his, his uh, confessions. Uh, here's just some quotes from, from them, from, from these books, the, the books of the confessions. He said, he's, he's, it's kind of like a journal or a, a prayer to God, most of it. Uh, and he says, speaking to the Lord, he says, You placed me in front of myself and thrust me before my own eyes, that I might find out my iniquity and hate it. So this is the act of it. You have to sit with yourself, look in the mirror, realize that you're ugly spiritually. Um, or what about you? Where's, where are the spots on your, um, on your shirt or on, on your tomb? How many are they? How big are they? Where are they? So it takes some, some work. Um, sometimes, we're yes, we're covered with mud, but we have to start somewhere. <laughs> okay. Um, another very important verse, like we say in Psalm 50, against you, you only have I sinned. So it's not just the sin that bothers us, but it's we realize that it's affecting our relationship with God. Uh, and that will help um, us go further in depth to repentance. Uh, as again, St. Augustine writes, I fell away from you, my God, and I went astray, too far astray from you, the support of my youth, and I became to myself a land of water. So he's talking about the prodigal son where it says in the God, he went to a land of want. He said, I myself is, is the land that, that's, that's wilderness um, because I left you. Uh, he said also in the confessions, God, you made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. So this restlessness is actually a good thing because it leads the person to a deeper repentance. If we don't have restlessness, that's a problem because we're okay. we feel that we're okay the way we are. That means, again, we're not... Um, in, in the proper uh, mode of, of repentance. Um, and there's many examples, we don't have time to go into them, but like Saint Peter, when, or Simon Peter, when he wept in the garden, this was because he realized you know, uh, that he had tarnished his relationship and his love, love, loving relationship with God. How do we know this? When the Lord rose from the dead, what, was he, what did he ask him? <laughs> do you love him? Um, so we, we love God and we know God loves us but when we realize that sin is entering into this or, or has the, the ability to tear our loving relationship with Him then we have to restore it by, by repentance okay? um, and there's a lot of other examples but again for the time we don't have the time to go into that so we correct or, or we reflect within ourselves. We try to correct our relationship with God by in the form of prayer. And even, like we said, through the, the prayers, especially of the Great Lent and, and the liturgies and the readings, the, the heart, the church is pushing us to, to um, uh, focus on the reconciliation that we have uh, with God through repentance and through the cross. The, the next, next thing that we need to do at one point, um, preferably before confession, is that we greet one another with a holy kiss. <laughs> what is this? Why do we do this in the church? I think we mentioned it before. Right? We shouldn't have communion with God, or we can't unless we're reconciled with God and reconciled with our brothers and sisters. So, like Zacchaeus, when, when he repented, um, his proof, he said, look, Lord, I give half my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore full fold. He uh, um, corrected his mistakes in the manner of speaking. Uh, sometimes we can't really correct things, but there are some acts that we can do um, to reflect. Like if we lied, we should go and tell the truth um, if, if we can. Um, if we took something, we restore. Uh, and. This is why St. James says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Um, and like the Lord said, if you bring your gift to the altar and then remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there uh, before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled 
and then come and offer your gift. Uh, first repent and confess, and then come and take communion. Um, that doesn't mean every single time we take communion we, should, we can confess because <laughs> I'm going to be much more busier than he is already. But at least we have to repent before God on a, a, as regular basis as possible. And that's probably why sometimes, if you notice in a lot of the, the liturgical prayers, there's the absolution prayer um, that the priest says. Okay, uh, Because... If, if we're repenting and maybe we didn't have the chance to, to sit with Abuna yet, but we, we have planned, or we just sat with Abuna, but we just com committed a, a sin and we're repenting and we want the forgiveness, we, uh, we can get this absolution prayer for us in, in the liturgy and in the, the Vespers and the Matins itself. Um, okay. Uh, so... The last step is actually confession, and we don't really have time to, too much to go into it, but here's just a, a guide what to do before, what to do after, some of the prayers before and after. Um, and uh, we'll just give two examples in the Old Testament. When David realized, King David realized his sin, and he, he actually confessed to Nathan, and he said, the, he said, I have sinned against the Lord. He didn't say I sinned against you, I sinned against uh, Bathsheba's husband. He said, um, the Lord has put away your sin, you shall not die. So he received the announcement of forgiveness through, you can say, this confession father. Um, and that's why sometimes we need to hear the, the, the acceptance, the forgiveness. And, and we need to verbalize it uh, to God's um, ambassador. Uh, another story in the book of Joshua, uh, 